Greetings and many blessings to all. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. Hit the button down there where it says subscribe. Okay, so today the video we are going to do is going to be every tongue, tribe, and nation. And we will begin by reading out of the book of Revelation. So I have my King James Bible, and I'm going to uh, Revelation chapter 5, and I'm going to begin there at uh, verse 9. Okay? And it says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Okay, we're going to read one more scripture. We're going to go to chapter 7 of the book of Revelation and verse 9 again. And, sorry, after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude. Let me say that again. A great multitude which no man could number. No man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Okay, so in both of these scriptures in the book of Revelation, we have um, people who are eternally saved, and they are in every uh, kindred, every tongue, every nation. That would be throughout all of history from the time that man uh, was formed until the day that Jesus returned to the earth in the second coming. And so, uh, I wanted to do a little bit of a follow-up from the other video I just did called The Narrow Way, because there was a little kind of pushback by some who did not understand that video and wanted to contend that the destruction mentioned in there was the destruction leading to hell, and the life in there was life eternal. All right, well, let's uh, read that scripture. So we're going to go to uh, Matthew 7. And uh, we're going to read verses uh, 13 through 14. Okay, here we go. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. All right, now I don't know if you've picked up on this yet or not. I don't know if I need to go get my trench coat and my cigar and, you know, play Columbo and say, well, you know, wait a minute, let's get this straight. Let me, I, I have to work this out a little bit. We just read in the book of Revelation where those who are saved eternally are out of every tribe, kindred, nation, and uh, it's a number that is so great that no man can number. And here we have in Matthew where we're talking about the life which cannot be eternal life, because it says few. Now, it's either few or it's great that no man can number. It can't be both because the Bible does not have any contradictions. So, if you're going to harmonize these two scriptures, you have to realize that the destruction that is spoken of by Jesus in Matthew 7 and the life that is to be found in the straight gate, the narrow way, can have nothing to do with hell. It can have nothing to do with heaven. It has to do with a Christian's daily walk. Let me repeat that again. It's a Christian's daily walk in this life because also 
Eternal life is a one-time situation. If God has regenerated you, you have eternal life. And it's not something that can be lost. You did nothing to gain it, and you can do nothing to lose it. So the life that is spoken of in Matthew is the everyday life. And if you are going to walk as a disciple on the narrow path, seeking to mortify the deeds of the flesh, then you will be walking on the narrow path. And you will be finding life. Is this eternal life? No, you already have that. It's temporal salvation. And that's another thing. I mentioned temporal salvation. And some people say, I've never heard of temporal salvation. Well, let me tell you something. You need to find out what it is. You need to study it. I can give you all the information you want on it. Because if you don't understand it, there's a lot of scriptures. You're not going to be able to rightly divide. What's rightly divide? Well, it's where you take and cut something straight so that when you sew it together, it uh, comes together the way it's supposed to be. That's really what that means. All right. So, now that we've got that out of the way, let me say something else. Do you know that you could be eternally saved and not even know it? A lot of people don't think that. They think they have something to do with it. They've got to make some kind of decision. They've got to ask Jesus into their heart. They have to repent. They have to believe. They have to do all these things. No. Eternal salvation is a birth. Okay? It's a birth. You start out with a birth spiritually. All right? Then you hear the gospel. And the gospel converts your mind to where now you have a belief. Now we have the difference between salvation eternally and salvation in time. Okay, who can save us from this untoward generation? All right, you're saved by the light of the gospel, which is the proclamation of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. And there again... Every person he died for will be saved in time in all the same manner through a birth, regeneration. I don't care if it's an unborn elect person. I don't care if it's a child that dies that never heard the gospel that was elect. They're eternally saved. I don't care if it's a mentally ill person who could not understand the gospel. I don't care how you explained it to them. They're not going to say, yes, I understand it, and then repent and believe. No, they're saved if they are one of God's elect through regeneration, whether they hear the gospel, believe it or not. All right, now, what about all of these tongues, tribes, and nations? You don't think that every single one of those persons heard the gospel, do you? Well, of course they didn't. So how are they saved? They're saved through a birth, a spiritual birth. Let us go once to the Gospel of John. We'll go to the Gospel of John, and we're going to read in chapter 3 and verse 8, just to kind of clarify this a little bit more. Speaking of the Holy Spirit here. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You don't know when it happened. If you think you know when it happened, well, you're probably deceiving yourself because you think you had something to do with it. Or you had some experience that some light came on inside of you or some emotional situation. All right, well, that's just because you were converted in your mind. All right? When a baby is born, does it know that it took its first breath? Of course not. It doesn't even know that it was born up until a point where it becomes cognizant of the fact and starts to realize that it is and who it is. Well, that is on the level of the flesh. The same is true on the level of the spirit. Now, let me say that again. The same thing 
in the flesh is true on the level of the spirit. That's why Jesus said, if I tell you about earthly things and you don't understand them, how are you going to understand anything that is of the spirit? We don't do anything to be born again. God does that all by himself in time when he desires to do it. And all of the people whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life will be born, regenerated by the Spirit of God in time before they die. Before the time they are born in the flesh and the time they leave the body, they are going to be regenerated and they will be one of those who will be one of the tongue, tribe, and nation, the great multitude, not the few. It's not the few that are saved. It's a great multitude. The narrow way and destruction in the book of Matthew have nothing to do with eternal life. They have nothing to do with heaven or hell. They have to do with Christians, not unbelievers. Okay, now that we got that straight, and now that we realize that we can do nothing to be saved, and if you believe that Jesus is God come in the flesh, and that he died for your sins again, and you believe that he's returning to uh, take you home, and you trust in his word, then you are one of God's elect, and you had nothing to do with it. I know I repeat myself, but once you get this down inside of you, it will burn in you, and you will rejoice knowing that God has saved you eternally. And now it's up to you to grow in your salvation and in your sanctification process. Sanctification is a process. The birth is not a process. It's an event. God bless you and bye-bye.